Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Next Generation Firewall Made Simple for MSP. I'm Sarah Duffy, Marketing Manager here in Antronis, and I will be moderating today's webinar. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. If you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to submit them in the questions panel to the right of the GoToWebinar screen. At the conclusion of the webinar, you will be prompted to complete a brief survey. Please take a moment to tell us what you think as we are continuously improving the quality and content of our online events. Today, I am joined by Cam Sarasula, a systems engineer here at Introna. Cam has over 10 years of experience in the information technology field supporting both hardware and software. Now with that, I'd like to pass it over to Cam. Cam, take it away. Well, thank you, Sarah, and thank you everyone out there for uh, joining today's webinar. Uh, so here's a quick look at our agenda. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Intronus as a company and have a peek at the new services that have become available recently. Uh, today we'll be focusing on a brief high-level overview of our next-gen firewall. Uh, we will have time for questions, so please feel free to enter them into the control panel as we're moving through the uh, discussion. For those of you who aren't familiar, Echo Platform Portal provides MSP-centric management with integration with many popular RMM and PSA tools. Uh, Intronus was acquired by Barracuda Networks in October of 2015, uh, and with that, uh, we've continued to leverage a strong MSP offerings that Intronus has become well known for, as well as providing opportunities to take full advantage of the uh, products and services from Barracuda. Now, our initial rollout uh, was for the Barracuda backup server. Uh, we followed that up with essentials for Office 365, and now we are introducing the NG firewall, uh, specifically designed for MSPs. And as you can see by our diagram here, we're working towards a full integration between the Echo Platform and all the security and data protection products that Barracuda offers. So, um, essentially just zero one devices um, uh, blocking or passing IP addresses and ports, and that was basically it. Um, uh, now, uh, with the evolution, we started to see um, newer firewalls that could do a little bit more uh, in addition to taking the port into account and with a traffic tie to access the network. Um, and then with the next generation firewalling, um, the traffic causing applications were then taken into account. And then today we have entered an era of cloud ready next gen firewalls. Uh, and this adds you know, WAN optimization capabilities, management and scalability, and a wide variety of uh, remote access options. Uh, so you can check the data quickly, easily, and most importantly, securely via the mobile device. Not to forget about reporting features and integrated link balancing and traffic intelligence. But more on these features, or at least a couple of them, in a few minutes. And all of this shall be available even uh, at your smallest SMB cu customer sites without the need of backhauling traffic. We need cloud-ready next-generation firewalls that ensure availability of business-critical data at any time and from anywhere. So I do believe uh, we're going to jump into a quick polling question here. So I'll pass this back over to Sarah, and uh, she'll take it away. Great. Thanks, Cam. So our first and only poll question is, do you currently offer a firewall? Yes. No, but plan to within the next six months. Or no, plan to within the next year. So we'll give everyone about 30 seconds or so here, and we'll see what the results are. So as the results are coming in, we will close the poll now, and it does look like the majority of you are um, offering a, a firewall right now. And you know, with this webinar, we'll share with you some, some new features that you know, might be a, a good alternative for you as well. All right, thank you, sir. Um, so today we'll be focusing on our next-gen firewall offering. Uh, the base for the NG firewall was laid by the uh, Fion NetFace uh, that was launched in uh, 2001. So uh, for now 15 years, uh, the focus has been on dealing with the requirements of distributed networks, scalability, manageability, and versatility in out-of-the-box features. 
uh, requirements back then are still valid now. In terms of manageability and scalability, they are even more pressing. Our MSP firewall is designed and built from the ground up to provide comprehensive next generation firewall capabilities. Uh, cloud hosted content filtering and reporting offload compute intensive tasks to the cloud uh, for even greater efficiency with uh, you know, resources and throughput. Uh, based on your application visibility, user identity, awareness, intrusion prevention, and centralized management, this firewall is ideal for your customers. So our firewall is a turnkey security solution that provides protection to secure multiple customer networks from advanced threats and all from one centralized management console. And it's a subs subscription-based appliance, uh, so it has no upfront fees. Our firewall is designed for MSPs with multiple customers and locations, where each firewall can be controlled through a single centralized management console that makes it easy to deploy uh, common security policies across multiple units. So you might say, uh, what are the key benefits of the Barracuda NG firewalls? Well, we'll focus on the following four for right now. So intelligent intelligently uh, regulate network traffic, uh, provide full user awareness, prevent hackers from infiltrating your network, deploy based on uh, your requirements, and, uh, and now we can kind of talk about them a little bit more in detail. So with the Barracuda NG firewall, you have granular control over the available bandwidth for your internet connectivity. Um, but there's more to it. Uh, so, Let's imagine that a NG firewall device is more than just one uplink. This enables you and your customer to distribute traffic uh, according to the application and customer custom. De <laughs> I can't speak, but anyway, <laughs> custom defined priority. Uh, so far, so good, right? Um, so now think one step further, though. One ISP is in a fail state, and this can be due to a you know distracted operator of an excavator who accidentally tears apart the the high load fiber connection, or an earthquake, or whatever the case might be. Um, so when there are emergencies and one ISP is offline, the NG can automatically ship the load from the, from the uh, down ISP line to uh, a working provider and assign a new emergency priority settings. Uh, this helps to guarantee continuous availability, availability again, it can't speak today, <laughs> for business critical applications. Um, now, uh, now that's taking uh, users in, into account yet, right? Uh, so on top of that, um, and they the mentioned uh, you know, quality of service capabilities from a bandwidth point of view, you can also regulate, regulate application use and sub-applications on a per user base. Uh, for instance, you can uh, restrict connectivity to certain applications and sub-applications to a limited user group. So uh, for instance, your HR department should be able to take care of your public Facebook profile but not be allowed to play Facebook games during working hours. And yep, that's absolutely correct. Uh, Barracuda NG firewalls let you also determine time frames uh, where apps are okay to be used. Now, uh, traditionally the method you have uh, is that you'll have one firewall at your location and then multiple client locations. Uh, within the control center, not only do you have the ability to provision rules, application control, all of the VPN tunneling, and all the routing required within that network, you also have the ability to give your customers control of what we call revision control. And so uh, we have built-in revision control in the firewall. So you can make a rule change in one of the firewalls um, and still feel okay. Uh, for example, say you have a rule number four that was completed last night and all it did was allow one set of subnets to go to a certain set of subnets on the internet, uh, but something went wrong you can go right into the control center and look for the, the point, uh, date, and then time that you made the change. Um, so you can look and say, we'll call it change 43. Then you can revert it back. And you can either erase the rule or go back and change the rule altogether. It's very simple for you, for your administrators to know uh, when rules are changed and when rules are made. With that, you also have the ability to add rules to individual users' networks that may only last for a certain length of time. And all the logging information is reported back to the uh, control center. So uh, flexibility from a managed service provider is huge. You get complete control of the NG firewall and at all client locations, uh, meaning it's completely transparent for them. Uh, any changes that are made are done straight by yourself and your customers uh, have peace of mind about it. And, and lastly, uh, if you have locations that are deploying virtual servers, you can pro provide the firewalls of virtual clients as well. Uh, again, all managed from the same uh, control center. 
So uh, the benefit of the drill down capabilities of the uh, next gen firewalls provide um, kind of comes into play with the report creator, which is an additional Windows executable that can be downloaded for free uh, from Barracuda. Uh, in order to make custom uh, to make report creation as convenient as possible, uh, you can load a predefined reports or create your own templates. Um, and then you can do automated delivery settings, uh, predefine the day and time for creating reports, and much more. Uh, create schedules, um, you know, the, the whole shebang. Um, and on top of that, the creative reports are easy to read too. And um, for the MSP market, the reports can be customized with your branding as well. Uh, so. Managing a set of firewalls for your SMB customers is really simple uh, when it comes to BMG. Um, so it was designed uh, with management at its core. Our uh, control center has the ability to manage thousands upon thousands of firewalls across the board. Uh, so you can roll up firewalls with all of your customers. Firewall rule sets and other security policies as well as software patches, version upgrades, um, are all centrally controlled from within the management console. Uh, deployment can be scheduled and applied to all managed devices. Uh, highly customizable administrative roles allow delegation of administrative capabilities for specific departments or locations. And administrators are kept informed at all times on the status of remote gateways and can implement centrally defined security roles at every location. Furthermore, uh, the integrated revision control system provides easy audits and cuts overhead. Now, um, as you might have heard, uh, security posture is a layered thing, and frankly, the more layers you have, the better your security posture. Our next-gen firewalls provide the traditional layers like antivirus, intrusion, pr detection, prevention systems, uh, but these traditional layers are most likely to be circumvented by advanced malware, zero-hour day exploits, spear phishing, whaling attacks, and whatnot. Uh, even in security-conscious companies that invest in training to raise the security thinking of their employees, uh, there's always going to be employees affected by such attacks. Uh, so it's mandatory to include an additional layer to prevent such attacks being successful, and we call this advanced threat detection. Uh, plus, your customers want to know what their employees are doing on their networks. You know, there's no when, what. Uh, so you might want to check SSL encrypted connections, since most websites out there now, at least most uh, major ones, are all uh, encrypted. Uh, you might want to define what to do with certain file types. You know, don't allow them, have them checked with the ATD, um, have users who question certain files uh, put into quarantine automatically, and thereby uh, uh, you can avoid uh, suffering from zero-day exploits or ransomware or anything like that. And uh, you can also detect uh, systems in your network that try to establish connection, connections to you know, botnet command and control centers and then block them from doing so uh, before you can even get back doors into your network. Uh, from a security perspective, your customers can improve their security protection by integrating pre previously disparate security functions, including you know, web filtering, malware protection, email security, intrusion prevention, application control, and for protection against zero day exploit, exploits and advanced persistent threats, the advanced threat detection into a single platform. Uh, so going a little deeper into that, um, the IPS and IDS you know, strongly enhances network security by providing complete and comprehensive real-time network protection against a broad range of network threats, vulnerabilities, exploits, and exposures in operating systems, applications, and databases, uh, preventing network attacks uh, such as uh, SQL injections and arbitrary code execution, uh, access control attempts and privilege escalation, cross-site scripting and buffer overflows, DOS and DDoS attacks, uh, directory traversal and probing and scanning attempts, backdoor attacks, Trojan, group kits, viruses, worms, spywares, um, all things that everyone out there should be fairly familiar with. Now, the uh, malware production covers viruses, worms, Trojans, malicious Java applets, uh, you know, and programs known to exploit uh, PDFs, pictures, office docs, macro viruses, and and more and more and more. Uh, in this day and age, this a very long list. <laughs> um, 
and uh, our malware protection is based on regular signature updates uh, as well as advanced heuristics to detect malware or other potentially unwanted programs even before signatures are available. Now, our advanced threat detection uses next-gen sandboxing technology to catch not only uh, persistent threats and zero-day exploits, but also advanced malware designed to evade detection. Files are forwarded to a cloud-based sandbox environment uh, where they are executed and analyzed to identify suspicious and malicious behavior. Uh, the administrator has full policy control over how PDF documents, uh, Excel files, Office files, um, Android, uh, APKs, compressed files, archives are all emulated and delivered to the client. Based on the identified malware activity, infected users can be automatically quarantined, preventing the malware from spreading within the network. And uh, the web filtering options for the firewall enables highly granular real-time visibility into online activity, uh, broken down by individual users and applications, and letting administrators create and enforce effective internet content and uh, access policies. Uh, it protects your customers' productivity, uh, blocks malware downloads and other web-based threats, and it enables your compliance by blocking access to unwanted websites and servers, providing an, a, an important additional layer of security alongside application control. Uh, so, all this being said, um, you as the managed service provider has complete control over what is going on. You can give these valuable reports back to your customers and tell them what's been going on and you can tell what's using most of their bandwidth. Uh, so if you found a certain location, say Facebook, that's using 60% of their network, you've got a great reporting tool to go ahead and say, you know, most of your bandwidth is being used by Facebook. And you may want to, you know, do, what you might want to do is allow um, us to add another rule that says, you know, uh, Facebook receives much lower um, QoS priority, or you can lower the bandwidth to a certain percentage. And that's the same for all your customers. Not only that, if people are having problems right now and then, you can use the uh, control center to connect these boxes and see exactly what's going on right now with that box live. If they're saying that they're having a problem, you can instantly look at the live traffic and see that actually someone's looking at Facebook or playing games or BitTorrenting um, or whatever and might be hogging most of your connection. And uh, you can on the fly traffic shape that down uh, and just give that a lower priority or terminate the session directly. <clears throat> but all these assets mentioned are not very useful if the product is not available for a certain deployment. So, you know, why should you buy security hardware when everything is hosted virtually? Uh, well, the NG portfolio is uh, available for um, multiple deployment offerings. Um, it's a physical hardware device, a virtual uh, that can be uh, rolled out to many, um, to actually most of the um, virtual hypervisors out there, and also in a private cloud or a public cloud. Uh, wherever you want to deploy it, we've got you covered. Uh, now, uh, specifically with Azure, if uh, Microsoft is ever going to recommend a firewall in Azure, uh, they're going to recommend the Barracuda NG. Um, they like it that much. Um, now, one of the uh, really great things is uh, setting up the site-to-site -site VPN tunnels. Um, it's really, really easy uh, with this interface in here. It's called the, uh, the GTI, which is the Graphical uh, Tunnel Interface. Um, and it allows you to just drag and drop um, numerous uh, firewalls, and you can create a uh, mesh VPN. It's that easy. So uh, the Barracuda Next Gen Control Center gives you full control over uh, system administration costs. Uh, lifestyle, uh, life cycle costs are, um, you know, central update management drastically lowers the time spent deploying patches. Our uh, firewall with different software versions can all be centrally managed at the same time. Uh, the deployment costs um, uh, using the, you know, management control center rollouts with hundreds of devices can be completed within a few weeks instead of months. And uh, for operating costs, uh, the control center helps to significantly reduce the costs associated with security management uh, while providing the extra functionality both centrally and locally at the managed gateway. Um, now, so Intronus focuses on uh, products, solutions, tools, and services uh, towards maximizing value for the MSP market. 
Uh, as a par partner, you'll also get exclusive access to the partner toolkit, which is packed with resources, um, everything from a uh, searchable knowledge base for fast troubleshooting and resolution, intro to university for self-serve certification training, and our library of sales and marketing enablement materials uh, where you can find uh, completely rebrandable data sheets and collateral. And, uh, and because we're constantly enhancing our platform, the partner toolkit gets refreshed uh, constantly. Uh, we have made a, a major investment in this area over the past 18 months, and we're doubling down in 2016, uh, expanding the team that delivers this content and working with you to make sure it continuously improves. Um, and that's about uh, what I have to say for the day. So thank you everyone for joining us today to to listen to the really you know thirty thousand foot view overview of the NG firewall. And uh, I'm going to pass this back over to Sarah now to uh, begin the Q and A portion. Great, thanks, Cam. So we will be starting the, the questions and answers portion. If you have any questions, please feel free to submit them in the, the questions panel to the right of your GoTo webinar screen. And before, before we get started, I would like to briefly um, discuss a little um, campaign we have right now um, called the MSP Marketing Masters Awards. Um, you know, it would be great if you could increase your odds of winning your share of $10,000 in marketing services for your MSP. Um, for all MSPs, you can submit a nomination to be recognized for your marketing efforts. All you need to do is go to our website here at intronus.com forward slash MSP dash marketing dash masters dash awards. The nomination process is very simple for any MSP looking for a chance to win uh, some valuable marketing services. Uh, the awards are open to Everyone, uh, you do not need to be a partner of ours in order to submit your nomination. Um, you know, for example, did you send out an email blast with great results? Did you host an event that generated new business? Does your website design um, is your your website design outstanding? Did you run a, an integrated marketing campaign that includes a combination of activities such as email, webinars, and more? You know, tell us what you did um, and how you created it. We are looking forward to seeing your submissions and you know helping to shine a light on all the hard work you've been doing. Um, if you do have any questions about the awards, you can email us at awards at intronus.com and we can answer any of your questions that you have to the, the services that you have a chance of winning. So we hope um, a few of those um, that are attending the webinar today um, you know, submit some nominations. And with that, um, Cam, are you ready for some questions? Sure. <clears throat> All right. Um, so uh, one of the uh, first questions here uh, that we have is, um, uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Uh, what protection does the NG firewall offer uh, in regards to malware, uh, excluding the ATD? Is it signature-based or behavior-based? Uh, so there are actually two AV engines that come on all the NGs. Um, so they signature-based. Um, the uh, more uh, behavior-based things and, and whatnot, um, and uh, specifically for unknown um, entities, that's where the ATD is going to come into play. Um, so hopefully that answers your question there. Um, uh, next question we have is, is there a migration tool uh, for taking basically uh, firewall rules over from uh, other pro firewall providers into the Barracuda? Um, no, there's not. Um, and the reason kind of behind this is uh, we've actually found that a lot of um, a lot of times, uh, especially with older firewalls that have been out in the field for a while, you get a lot of administrators' hands in there working on it and stuff like that. And um, we find that when you're putting in a new firewall, that's actually the perfect time to go ahead and kind of assess your rule set. Um, quite often, I've seen it where you know, good, uh, a good 40, maybe even 50 percent of the rules that are that are in there are. 
um, old rules that don't need to be in there, duplicate rules, stuff like that. Um, so oftentimes when you're getting a new firewall, that's the, uh, the best time to go through there and kind of uh, sift through and really identify what rules you actually care about. Um, but uh, that's kind of a long answer to a fairly short question. But uh, uh, all right, next question here is <laughs> perfect. Uh, can mobile apps be blocked like Pokemon Go? Go. <laughs> um, uh, yes, they can. Uh, so we have uh, both a, um, a VPN and a NAC client for iOS and uh, Android devices. Um, so uh, apps like that can be blocked uh, via that methodology or depending on how that mobile device connects to the you know the client network whether it's on a, a you know, guest Wi-Fi or or something of that nature you can also um, you know traffic shape that uh, so you actually have a, a few different options in there on how to do that um, next question is uh, how does ATD differ from the file content scan uh, so the ATD is, uh, I guess the best way to, to put it without getting too into the weeds here is um, it's more how it operates. Uh, so the ATD is going to be grabbing anything that doesn't have a known signature um, and throwing it up into the, the Barracuda cloud. And uh, from there, it, the payload is going to be detonated. Uh, now, these environments that are running in the cloud are uh, full uh, machine environments. Uh, and they're also, um, the time is sped up on those uh, to also try to catch the, the uh, malware packages that are, are time released. Um, so we can go ahead and continuously try and catch, you know, all, all the new threats that are coming out there. Um, where the uh, file content scan is uh, just going through and, and dealing with uh, more signature-based things. Uh, okay, uh, next question is, uh, do you have a tunnel to the client location to manage uh, the, the firewall? Uh, yes, uh, so there is a, uh, a private tunnel that goes between the control center and the all of the managed uh, firewalls. Uh, it's on a, a completely separate uh, network um, and it that runs along the, uh, the VPNs. Um, let's see, the next question is, um, how are we protecting uh, your network without a firewall on site? Uh, uh, well, you'd, um, you wouldn't really be able to protect a LAN um, without a uh, a device on site, whether it's a, a physical device, a virtual device, or you know, even if it's a LAN uh, in the cloud, uh, you would still need uh, some type of firewall to go ahead and, and uh, protect that. Um, uh, let's see here. Next question is, uh, when do we get a pricing structure? That's a very good question, um, and uh, that can actually be answered by um, any of your your sales reps. So if you guys are current partners, you can reach out to your regional account director, um, get a hold of them. Um, if you are a uh, prospective customer and per prospective partner of ours, uh, you can reach out to any of our partner development managers, um, and uh, there's also, I believe, a URL on the screen that you can reach out for uh, more information as well, uh, and any of our uh, sales folks can go ahead and get you that information. Um, and uh, what's the next question here? Oh, can uh, Control Center be used with existing Barracuda NG firewalls? Absolutely. Uh, so if you do have uh, standalone firewalls out there, they can be imported into Control Center. Uh, and it's actually a pretty easy process to do. Um, and it just really comes down to uh, taking the PAR file from the standalone box, putting it into Control Center, and then taking the, the, that new PAR file from Control Center and putting it back on the box, thereby creating that link. Um, and uh, let's see, what's our next question here? Um, Uh, we've got a couple of duplicate questions in here about pricing, so I'm just going to skip a little bit. Um, 
Okay, uh, so there's a couple questions in here about sizing and stuff like that. Um, to be honest, uh, this isn't the best venue for that because um, there's a bunch of different factors going to it. Uh, the main thing about uh, sizing these appliances uh, comes down to um, users, um, and but not just um, uh, the number of users, but uh, what those users do and what they do with their network and whatnot. Um, so that's a, that's definitely a better question to have, um, you know, uh, and kind of in a one-on-one -on -one situation where we can really start to understand. Um, you know what your client environment is like, um, so we can get you sized to the to the correct appliance. Um, and you know, if you reach out to any of your sales reps, um, they'll they can get on a call with uh, either myself or another one of our systems engineers, and and we can really get um, you know kind of dig deep into that question. Um, and uh, let's see, what other questions do we have here? Um, Uh, oh, okay. Um, so, a question about um, uh, control center and whether it's in whether it's cloud-based. Uh, so, control center can be deployed as a uh, physical or, or virtual, um, but it's not being hosted by Barracuda. Uh, so, uh, oftentimes, what we see partners doing is uh, go ahead and and you know putting a either a physical or virtual control center in their office and. Um, and uh, uh, you know, controlling all of their uh, their firewalls, their client firewalls in there. Um, we got a few more questions in here about uh, pricing, which um, all kind of goes back to uh, top two sales rope. <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, let's see what else we have here. Oh. Um, so as of right now, a Barracuda hosted um, control center is uh, not on the roadmap. At least I have not heard about it. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean that someone somewhere isn't thinking about it, but hasn't at least gotten down to me yet. Um, and uh, let's see what else we have in here. Um, okay, uh, so we have a question here about um, if we can protect uh, mobile workstations uh, when they're not behind the firewall. Um, so if the mobile device has uh, CUDA launch, installed on it, uh, which works as, it can either be installed as a, a standalone uh, client-to-site VPN tunnel, or it can be um, a NAC or one or the other or both. Um, so yes, if that is on that mobile device, um, but of course, if you just have a, a, you know, a BYOD out in the wild, um, and it's doesn't have CUDA launch on it, and it doesn't have, and it's not behind the firewall. Then no, we can't protect it. Um, and then uh, let's see. Uh, probably the, the uh, last question for today. Um, will Intronus offer the S series as well? Um, as of right now, we are only rolling out the F series. Um, I have not heard any plans to roll out the S series, but I've also not heard any plans to not roll it out. <laughs> um, so uh, the best I can tell you is I don't know, um, and uh, and uh, that's a, that's about all I have. Great. Well, thanks, Cam. Thank you. Um, the webinar has been recorded today, and it will be sent out within 24 hours for anyone that's interested in listening in on the, the webinar again. Um, and with that, I want to thank everyone for joining, and Cam, thank you again. Thanks, Sarah.